Hey everyone, welcome to How to Rank It. This is a show where we take a genre or subgenre of movies, watch them in order, and rank them by a certain set of criteria. Each month we add another movie into the pile of compared movies, and eventually we end up with a nice list of the best, worst, and meh movies. Have you ever wondered which Disney movie is best, which Pixar movie is the most beautiful, or which Wiseau movie makes the most sense? You are tearing me apart, Lisa! Then this channel might just be for you. One way or another, hit that subscribe button and decide over the next couple months whether or not you like this idea. Come and join the fun. Right now we are ranking every Disney movie in order and deciding which one is the best using the smacked system, which is a very pretentious way of saying we're judging these movies on storyline, music, animation, character, and technology. Come and join us and let's get ranking together. start off with Jiminy Cricket, who tells us how he learned to dream. Thank you, Disney, for not making me read. Much appreciated. Geppetto is a lonely old man who longs for a child and creates marionettes. He's basically the Doc Brown of this story. <laughs> Geppetto gets tired in the span of about 20 seconds and hops into bed. Aw, Finger, I forgot to open the window. That window is right there, in arm's length, lazy human. Who knew cats could be used as slave labor? You're literally on your knees at the window in the next scene. Poor kitty, all that work for nothing. Bad master. Geppetto wishes. Geppetto sleeps. Blue fairy creates life. Pinocchio wakes Geppetto and they dance. Pinocchio demonstrates his stupid. Pinocchio goes to school. People used to let their kids outside without a helicopter mom there? And they weren't arrested? How did this culture survive? Pinocchio meets some talent scouts. Um, why is there a cat and a fox who talk and walk on two feet in this world? Are they mutants? Are, are they the marginalized in society? Actually, I was going to insert some sort of a joke here, but they might be the representation of those people who are marginalized, and how they will sometimes have to resort to illegal or immoral behavior because the society in which they live is rigged against them. That could be a thing. More on that later. Then you haven't heard of the easy road to success. I'm speaking, my boy, of the theater! Acting is the easy road to success. These people apparently went to the Wiseau School for the Arts. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. When does Pinocchio learn this song and dance routine? Wasn't he born yesterday, literally? I usually need at least a couple days to memorize a number. What does an actor want with a conscience anyway? Best line ever. <laughs> <laughs> there! No! I hate Stromboli. I waffle on, is this Pinocchio's fault or Jiminy's or Geppetto's? I want to say it's the dad's fault. Oh, no. But is it really such a terrible Good thing night, to Joe. let your, I don't know, six, eight, 10 year old outside by himself and even if it is isn't a single dad deserving of one mistake this whole movie seems to be about how life doesn't always go your way unless you have a magical fairy then you might be given a free pass out you see pinocchio a lie keeps growing and growing until it's as plain as the nose on your face your nose is growing comes directly from the saying it's plain as the nose on your face Interesting. Boy! Oh! Another scary face. These two faces prove that Disney was not for kids. Pinocchio runs into Honest John again. If you have to call yourself honest, you probably aren't. It's like someone calling himself a ladies man. If you have to say it, it's probably not true. I love how Jiminy is not big enough to defend himself. Perfect Here metaphor for again. conscience. Pleasure Island. This was made by Walt Disney, right? Is this a reflection of how he felt about amusement parks? Is this why he felt he needed to make a family-friendly one, perhaps? Shooting pool. Why would you drink and smoke and shoot pool when you have an amusement park outside? I'd rather ride the Matterhorn. Underage drinking and smoking and, oh, the word jackass. Clearly Disney was not solely targeting a family audience. Well, they're not donkeys yet. Apparently there's been no jackassery. Pinocchio must be just that good an influence. 
smoking. Apparently playing pool is as bad as smoking. We had a pool table in my Christian youth group. Was I making an ass out of myself? Actually, I probably was. Nope. Sure I was. What happens to these children? Are they slave labor or fur coats or glue? And why is it just happening to his friend and not as much to Pinocchio? Did Pinocchio start out more innocent? What do they tell these boys' parents? Or is it a human trafficking parallel? More on that later. Pinocchio runs away and washes up on shore. Hey, uh, he was swallowed by a whale. Swallowed uh, by a whale? Yeah. Uh, and, hey, where are you going? I'm going to find him. How would Pinocchio know how to make a whale sneeze? Did we cut out the learning of this in a deleted scene? Pinocchio dies in a final act of selflessness. Deus Ex Machina. As a single dad, this movie feels real and somewhat raw to me. It acts as great allegory for single parents or parents who want to adopt a child. This movie shows both the hardships and the love of single or adoptive parenting. I enjoyed it far more than I remembered, and it even managed to squeeze a tear from me twice. The biggest thing that sets apart this storyline is the real world issues that this story parallels. Adoption, single parenting, the plight of the marginalized, and human trafficking are all discussed in this movie as secondary plot points. Pinocchio and Geppetto serve as examples of a very loving non-bio parent relationship. It's not a perfect parallel though, because the relationship seems to blossom over what I can only assume is a 48 hour period. But it's Disney. Most major life decisions in the land of Disney take only about five minutes to decide. The gleam in your eyes is so familiar a gleam. The two darker elements are human trafficking and the marginalization of the oppressed. Do you ever wonder why there are only two talking humanoid animals in this movie? Even for Disney, which is rife with humanoid animals, this is a weird situation. All the other characters are humans. But could it be that these animals are to indicate without expressly pointing to marginalized people groups? And yes, showing marginalized people groups as animals is problematic to say the least, but given the time in history, this representation may have been a step in the right direction. Well, first of all, I had to stick my head through a hole in a piece of canvas and people throw baseballs at me. Oh, well, boy, you must be independent. No, but that darn bull is. <laughs> marginalized group of people are expressly considered other for some reason, these people are then up against a system that is rigged or bent against them. Since the legal system is bent against these people, other means of success are chosen, albeit in a vein that might be less than legal. Or they turn to show business. Okay, not totally fair. But as of the 1940s, yeah. This was a thing. Harlem had some particularly egregious examples of this kind of exploitation. Blacks really weren't allowed, or weren't uh, allowed to, to uh, come in, really. And we knew that, but we worked under those conditions. We didn't like that one bit, but what could we do? Today, it can still be a thing. These 15 black people on that montage. <laughs> Pinocchio's values stand in stark contrast to that of Snow White. Give a little whistle. Give a little whistle. Another interesting thread to this storyline is the lack of a true villain. Sure, there are bad characters, but they seem to be there for the sole purpose of showing that it's not always easy to navigate right and wrong. Pinocchio does not need someone to battle because he is battling himself. He's both the protagonist and the antagonist. This is pretty postmodern stuff for 1940. Pinocchio's decisions are the driving force of the conflict. And I love that because it's so true to real life. How frequently do people really have an antagonist? There is a great truth found in my decisions creating my own conflict. And as Pinocchio overcomes his obstacles, he moves from selfish, naive child too self-sacrificing for his father. But in comparison to Snow White, Pinocchio had stellar use of storyline, and this week it is number one in that category. I made no mistake last week that I'm not really a fan of Snow White's voice. However, the difference between the scores here is that Pinocchio's score sometimes uses its surrounding to organically create music. 
And why belabor it? Pinocchio is number one for music this week. And the backgrounds are beautiful on both of these movies because backgrounds can have a higher level of attention given them. However, I think the backgrounds of Snow White are actually better than the backgrounds on Pinocchio. But when I look at Snow White's character against these ornate stones and foliage, she looks out of place. However, Pinocchio and Honest John look intentional in front of these more scaled back paintings. In my not so humble opinion, the main characters look more in place in this world. And all the characters just look better in comparison. Which means it receives number one with animation. Character building is strong in this movie, with the exception of Fairy Fix It All. All of these characters are grounded in imperfection. Each character is relatable because each character has flaws. Pinocchio is trying and always failing at being good. Geppetto loves his son and tries to protect him, but he's also an imperfect, inexperienced parent. None of these characters is completely black and white, but some of these characters are worse than others. Even the scenes I perceive as filler are useful. Just like scenes in a musical can help you understand characters, set the setting, or further the plot, so can filler help you accomplish these things. These establishing shots in Pinocchio help us to understand without any speaking at all that Geppetto lives on his own and has a lot of time to himself in which he makes toys and other trinkets when he names and dances with lifeless Pinocchio, we understand he desires to have a child. For its pseudo-realistic characters, Pinocchio is number one in character also. Technology. My favorite scene in this entire movie is the multiplane shot through the city. I can't imagine how difficult this scene had to be to shoot from one multiplane layer to another. And this was Disney's second feature length film. Sorry, I just let my geek show. Needless to say, I love this scene, and you already know that I'm a huge fan of the multiplane camera. That puts Pinocchio in second place for technology. What? Second place, I hear you asking? Yes, even though I think this technology is mastered a little better than Snow White, Pinocchio is not the pioneer of this technology. Pinocchio is an incredible movie. The script and themes of this movie seemed surprisingly applicable for today's situations also. And I think it holds up very well as a serious film tackling serious issues. Averaging all these categories together, Pinocchio receives the number one slot. What do you think? Does Pinocchio deserve this honor? Should it stay this way? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe for more content. And share this video to start your own conversations. Mm -hmm.